everybody. Coming at you live from Gear Central. Well, actually it's my basement. <laughs> Coming at you live from my basement filming a YouTube video. <laughs> now it's been about, I don't know, three, four years maybe since I've done uh, the machete video. And I felt like it'd be an update. And this time I decided to call it the Big Blade video. Because last time I got into so many arguments with keyboard warriors over what's a machete and what's not a machete and what's a big blade and what's not. Well, <laughs> whenever I buy a blade, however they uh, sell it, is it's up to them. I mean, some people label things machetes. Some people label them as a mini machete. Uh, some big knives are named uh a machete. Uh, I don't know. It just it's, it depends on the manufacturer. And a lot of times, in my opinion, you know, the length of the blade is not as important as the grind. You know, because like a full flat grind on something, I consider that a big knife. I don't really consider that a blade because a full flat grind is more of a carving grind to me than a chopping grind. But anyway, let's get into it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over all of my machetes and big knives. And some of my thoughts on them and how my opinions have changed, how my taste has changed, what's my favorite, what I hate. Uh, try, I'll try not to get into the bad mouth and too bad, but it may happen. <laughs> so let's get started at looking at some big All right, blades. let's just get started with the basic stuff here now, and which is going to be some of the machetes that I had first started out with. All right. Now, <clears throat> this course it's, it's from the company Ontario. I think it, almost everybody, any outdoors person, has had some kind of an on, Ontario machete. All right. Now in general if you buy a machete like this one right here, this might be the 18 inch. I don't think I've ever owned the 22 inch. But they make a 12 inch, 18, and a 22. And this one has a saw back. And this one is just kind of dubbed the military machete because this is what the military carried for a long time. And then it's got the saw back on it. And just a regular handle. Now, a lot of times when you buy these, they don't come with a sheath. They just come with a cardboard tube. And this one is made by TruSpec. It's a woodland camo one. Okay, It's held up pretty good, but sometimes that saw back right there will mess that up. All right. Now, the other one that I had, my other old Ontario, I think this is called a utility machete. And I got it in a uh, Cordura sheath. And it has a D handle with a saw back. And it's an 18 inch. Okay, these things, these are pretty good machetes. Uh, you, you can't, you can't ask much more for the price. Pretty good still, holds the edge pretty good. Now in this sheath right here, I have rigged it up to where in this sheath, I used to carry this in the wetlands and the swamps. That way I could just sling everything over my shoulder and carry it with me. So I had the machete, and I've got an American-made, high-quality fillet knife. Okay, for like whenever I'm fishing and things in the swamp. I have it strapped down here on this. And then up here, I have a knife with a small survival kit, a uh, uh, little bitty flashlight, uh, a ferro rod and some matches and some fishing line and stuff like that in it. This is a cheap knife, but it's been a decent knife. So let's take this out right here. Because I don't use this rig much, so I put a cheap knife on it. This is a Colt. That's a very, very cheap knife, but it, it I was surprised it actually holds an edge. And I like the sheath, so that's how it wound up in here. Alright, and I'm going to show you here in just a minute how uh, this sheath goes, how you wear this sheath. Now here's a little bit, little bit better look of the sheath right here. It's got the knife here and it's got like a little shoulder strap here and then you can clip it or unclip it if you want to. I've got some uh, there's some clips right here so if you want to you can put it back to belt carry if you want to. Uh, I think it's funny I made this thing about I don't know I made this setup about six or seven years ago and then all of a sudden charades started <laughs> coming out with these shoulder slings like this. I don't know if it's something they might have saw. I seriously doubt it because People think alike. They tend to think alike. Now the way this thing works right here is you just wear it like this. Just like that. So you've got your knife right here in front of you with your little flashlight here and your matches and everything. And then on the back you've got your machete. And see that way nothing is on your belt. Everything is up out of the water and everything stays dry. So like I said, it works, works good in the swamps, the wetlands, and even works good if you're in the snow. You got everything up here where you need it. Also good for canoeing 
That way, if you happen to fall over, everything is going to stay on you and you won't lose anything. And you'll have just the bare necessities with you. All right, in keeping with Ontario, this is my Ontario RTAC 2. All right. Somebody said they changed the steel in this. I'm not real sure, but I think mine is the actual 5160, which is the good steel. All right, it comes in a nice sheath. It's got the double locks here. It's got the molly stuff, <clears throat> the, all the molly uh, attachments on the back. And it has a pouch. And in this pouch, it's cool. I keep a multi-tool. All right, I think that's a, that's a real old Gerber multi-tool. Long time ago, I haven't bought anything from Gerber in years, but their old multi-tools are fantastic. And that pocket, uh, that pocket will also hold a silky pocket boy, which is awesome because I love having a machete and a uh, a machete and a saw. Of course, a machete and a multi-tool is a good thing too. Now, this the Ontario Artac 2. Look at that. There's still wood attached to the blade. <laughs> Now, uh, this has got the uh, Randall's Adventure and Training logo on it, which I think has been removed since then. It's got a my, my car to handle, and uh, this is the 5160. Now, this has a full flat grind, so some people call this a big knife. Some people call it a machete. To me, since it's got a full flat grind, I call it a machete. All right, so, all right, that's another Ontario knife. Let's throw this over here in the pile <clears throat> that I've shown. And I have now another tried and true around here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Oh no. I'm not very, here it is, right here. <laughs> this is my Ontario SP8. Okay. Leather sheath. Well, the back of it's leather and the front of it is uh, Cordura. And it's got the dangler so that you can hang it from your, uh, your leg. Some people tie paracord to the end of these and tie it around your leg but all that does is get on my nerves something this short i just go ahead and i just i just tie it off here i have attached to this a cold steel i think it's a fin bear yeah a cold steel fin bear cheap knife but it's a pretty good knife pretty good holds the edge pretty good a stainless steel i use it for food the all my stainless steel knives only touch food that's my rule all right Okay, got a strap here, and then got a three-button strap made out of leather here, and it is a square-ended machete. I love it. It's a beast. It's quarter-inch thick. Usually, whenever they have a square end, this is called a coping machete, and I don't know why they call it that other than you are coping with a disaster, <laughs> because this has also been deemed a survival and rescue machete, but that is a chopping beast. I like it. For quarter inch thick, it's really not that heavy. That's my other Ontario. All right, now my final Ontario, I believe, is my favorite machete of all time, always has been, always will be. It is the Ontario SP53, 5160 steel. Uh, it's got all the molly attachments on the back. On the inside, back behind this knife, is a, fer a pocket, and I have a ferro rod put in it, crammed in it. And then I have extra cordage wrapped around it right here. And the knife that I've got attached to it is, let me pull it out, I can't do it one-handed while I got it hold up, is a Mora Bushcraft Black. Okay, I love all Moras. I'm a Mora kind of guy. I love it, I love it, I love it. That's a fantastic knife right there. You have two straps right here. 5160. They claim it's kind of a kukri shape. But the blade doesn't bend down at an angle like a real kukri. But when it's got this recurve and this belly in it with a point, they claim that's kukri style. But I love this. It's quarter inch thick. This is a chopping beast. I love it. I love it. I love it. As many machetes as I have, I have some that I really like. But as far as this and being my favorite, it's my favorite. Now, I have started in recent times. Years ago, I did the old thing where I tied the the paracord around my leg and as the as the tear if you get it too tight it irritates you and if it drops down on your leg it irritates you so what i started doing is putting webbing on here with canvas to go around my leg but since then i have other ways of doing things <laughs> and i'm going to point that out in some of these other sheaths and now i would say as a whole you know some machetes i have more of one brand some i do i don't whatever uh it varies <clears throat> i'd say as a whole 
pretty much Ontario Knife Company is pretty much my number one company right now. Uh, I just, I don't know, I like the company. Uh, my second runner-up is a tie between Condor and uh, K-Bar, okay? And I would say Condor's my number one company, but I really love that SP-53. I mean, just nobody's replaced this as my favorite. They haven't been able to. And I don't know what it is. It's just, it's a chopping beast. I mean, it's just, I just love it. I love using it. I love all my machetes, but I really love that one. So let's run on here to K-Bar real quick. Okay, K-Bar. Uh, I think I got the K-Bars right here. There might be a K-Bar over here. No. All right, I think I got all the K-Bars right here. Now, this machete here, most of mine are heavy wood choppers. This is not, okay? This, this machete's got a bad wrap. This is the K-Bar Grass Machete. It has what's called a duplex grind. Let's see if I can swap this over up here. Can you see how it's got like, it's got like two, two dips in it? It's got like a primary, a secondary, and then a third grind. And the reason it does that is uh, so it can be a razor sharp finish. I mean razor blade thin type finish and that's because this thing is made for grass and vines and vegetation and thorns and this thing just really excels at it you don't want to be chopping wood with this and it's got a kind of a bad rap for that people trying to chop wood with this and baton with it the edge is just so thin but this thing comes in a really horrendous sheath i hate the sheath it's a horrible sheath so i grabbed up this canvas sheath and stuck it in it and then I have attached this other uh, canvas sheath to it that it has a pouch attached to it. And it's got like a sharpener in it and a ferro rod and some things. And then just naturally I felt that I felt I should pair it up with another K-Bar. So I got the K-Bar fighting knife that I have paired it up with. So that's a pretty good system right there. And I like that. I like this for whenever I'm going to be messing around with vines and grass and thorns and things. And like I say, I don't, I try not to chop wood with this because that's, that'll abuse the edge and that is not a good thing. <laughs> All right, now my two other K-bars right here. I think this is going to be, I think I just have three K-bars right now. Unless something slip in my mind. But anyway, these are just so much fun and they're around 50 bucks a piece. This one and this other one. And what this is is this is the K-Bar Kukri. Okay, the back side is leather, the front side is Cordura. Okay, it's got two snaps, it's got a dangler. You only have to undo one snap to get it out. Okay, now it's not a genuine Kukri, but it's got that distinctive down bent shape so that whenever you're chopping, the angle of the blade is more like a scissor action. But, uh, Anyway, they've all, all of my machetes have lanyards. I'll talk about that more at the end. But that's just a very comfortable chopping blade. It's got a really nice point for putting dimples into things, like if you're doing a bow drill or something. And uh, I have Velcroed onto it another small stainless steel knife. That is the Cold Steel Roach Belly. I think it's about 11 bucks. You can't beat it. It's a good stainless steel knife. I use that for food, fish, meat. You know, it's held on with industrial Velcro. Okay, that is a good, good outfit right there. That's my other K-Bar. This is the K-Bar Cutlass. Okay, the sheath is just about the same way. Leather on the back, cordura on the front. Okay, and it's got a belt dangler. Okay, if you want to, these have a little place on the bottom, both of them. The sheaths are almost identical to the Ontario SP-8, which blows my mind. They're made by different manufacturers, but they're about the same. Leather on the back, cordura on the front, with a little ring on the bottom for a, for a, a leg uh, support. Okay, This one, it's got, it's got two snaps to hold it in. And as usual, if you'll undo the top, it'll come out. And this has got like a, almost a sort of a, pseudo kukri type shape because it's got a dip with a belly in it you know i think they call it a recurve but uh that's a very comfortable blade it's around 50 bucks very very comfortable it's very lightweight not quite a quarter inch it's like 3 16 inch that's either 1075 or 1095 i can't remember which one it is but that, that's a that's a good blade right there. that's a good 50 dollar blade 
all that Ontario SP8 that I love so much. It's a little thicker than this, but the shape is about the same. This is around $90 for that one. This is around $50. And I have it paired up with, I think, a Canadian belt knife. Yeah. It's a cold steel Canadian belt knife. That's another stainless steel knife. Like I said, I use them. Because I've always got a mora. My mora does my small wood carving. And my machetes does my heavy chopping. And then whenever I'm going to have food, sometimes I'll have this. Unless I have a stainless steel mora packed into my food kit okay so all right i think that is it for the condors i mean k bars condors are next <laughs> really i never hated condor but years ago i didn't really care for condor you know i didn't i don't know i just i just didn't like them and one of the reasons why this machete here is one of the reasons why okay now this is a this is just a general, uh, this is just your basic looking machete, okay? It comes in a long leather pouch, all right? Big long blade. Now, you see that little hole out on the end of her? That's the eye of the condor. And that was the reason why I didn't like them. I didn't like them. I don't like holes in the blades. I didn't like the handles. I can't stand these black looking handles. At least it's not round. At least it's sort of oval shaped. Because anything that's round has has a tendency to roll in your hand but this is a stainless steel machete it's pretty old i didn't use it that much because this one was real bad about chipping and rolling the edge but for a long time i didn't like condor i was hung up on ontario and k-bar because i had luck with them but condor and k-bar i had bought everything that i liked that they made so that's when i kind of started looking at condor and when condor started coming out with wooden handles and micarta handles and I mean, I'm talking about some of these other ones, when you're thinking about Rambo and G.I. Joe and all that, these black tactical looking things and these Creighton handles, you think of that. But when you think of bushcraft, to me, that's when you're starting to look at Condor, okay? Because that's just, that's just what it reminds me of. All right, now let's take a peek at this right here, okay? Condor Village Parang. All leather sheath. It's got two snaps on it. It has a dangler right here, I guess. Well, a pivot. It's not really a dangler. The only thing about these condor sheaths, they're very high quality, but the length of them, this isn't high enough. A lot of times, these these the handles will stab you, and so I've I've been working on trying to change that. I'm, I've been trying to come up with something for all my condor sheaths. I did come up with one. I'll show you in a minute, but it's Cordura. I haven't come up with anything for this yet. But the Condor Village Parang, okay? You can pretty much this one. You have to unsnap both of them. All right. <clears throat> Hold the underneath of the sheath, and see, I'm still having trouble with this one. And I got cut a couple of videos ago with this thing, because I have so many machetes that they will sit around, and the sheaths don't get maintained like they should. They don't get oiled like they should, and they get hard and dry. And then the blades, sometimes I'll get sap on them, and it made it where it was very hard to get this out of here. And it's a little bit better now, because I put beeswax on this, and I've oiled the sheath. And I tried to remove some of the sap. But the Condor Village Parang, it's not necessarily a true Parang, but it is a Parang style. Okay, And the grind on most of these Condors is just a, a, a convex edge, kind of like an axe. That is a chopping beast. And this one, I, used, I usually use paracord on my lanyards, but this has a leather lanyard because I'm just trying to keep the traditional look of it. So, let's put this thing back in here. Yeah, I've got this sheath kind of waxed up a little bit. Some of you may have seen that video where I got cut in it. I got cut pretty bad getting it out because I was aggravated. Because people that don't film videos, they don't understand how hard it is to film these videos and pay attention to the camera, pay attention to what you're doing, thinking a step ahead and knowing what to say. It gets pretty hectic and pretty complicated. All right. Anyway, and then I have paired this up with, this is the bush, bush, uh, bush lower. Condor Bush Lower. It's got a Scandi grind, wooden handle. I love that knife. That's a fantastic knife. I love it. I love it. That's a good outfit right there. Condor Village Parang. Let's throw it over here in the pile. All right, now I have some more that are similar to it. Somebody had asked me one time, this is the Condor Mini Dooku. There's no snaps on it. It's just a simple pull it out and use it. 
Now somebody asked me one time, this is a mini Dooku, okay? It's like a mini Parang. Somebody had asked me one time which did I like better because I had used both of these recently. What do I like better, this or the Village Parang? Well, simply put, the Village Parang is a whole lot bigger. And it's more of a chopping beast. It's heavier, it's bigger. Let me back up here a minute. See the difference in them? And it's a lot thicker too. This is quarter inch thick and this is like three, three sixteenths thick. There's a big difference in the two. So basically, if I'm not gonna be hiking far and I'm gonna be doing a lot of chopping, I prefer this. But if I'm gonna be hiking long distances, the Mini Dooku is for me because it really doesn't weigh much. All right, parang shape, I like that. It's got like some decorative brass wrapped around right here, which is kind of neat. Because I think when the, the real deal parangs, I think they're, they're uh, inserted into the handle, a split handle, and then they're secured with some sort of a cordage or wrap or wire, brass, I don't know, but that's what they did to keep it in tradition. And the sheath has got the the belt loop on it like all the other condors. Now, I have paired this thing up. I have wrapped it in leather. And I have paired this thing up. And I got some industrial Velcro down here. This is the mini bush lower. Alright. Now, I want to talk a minute about this mini bush lower. I like this little knife right here. Now, you see this thing hanging off the end right here? Come a little closer. See this little thing hanging off the end? Some people call that a lanyard, and that's actually not a lanyard. That is a fob, F-O-B. I don't know who came up with it, but that's what people call it. Because a fob is for two reasons. One of them on like a fixed blade knife like this, as you can see, the handle is only worthy of about three of my fingers, possibly four. Well, it allows you an extra place to kind of hold on to it, okay? That's one of the reasons for it. Now, the other reason for it is like, say, if you have a knife that goes, the sheath goes all the way up to the top, or especially a folding knife with a clip, where you clip it inside your pocket, you got to kind of fumble with it to get it out of your pocket. <clears throat> so you have a fob, and this is hanging out of your pocket, and you grab it, and that's how you pull it out of your pocket. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to just mention that, bring that up. That is a fob, okay? I don't know where the name came from, but that's not a lanyard. <laughs> I put this blade up and then I'll get I'll get right back to you. <laughs> Seems like I'm talking a little fast, but I'm trying to breeze through all this. <laughs> if there's something you missed or something that you didn't catch, you'll just have to rewind and try to listen to me. <laughs> okay, the next one up is <clears throat> the Condor Pack Go Lock. Okay, now this one <clears throat> I didn't put leather on the end of it. I put a paracord, uh, coyote brown, and down here on the bottom I have a. Uh, they used to make the Bushcraft Basic knife. They used to make a small, a medium, and a large, and they stopped making the small, and I don't know why, but I latched a hold of one. And I have to say, now that's supposed to be a carving knife, because see how tiny the blade is on it? It's mostly handle. I gotta tell y'all, I have been cut with this knife more than I have any knife I own, period. I don't know why. <laughs> I just don't know why. Maybe, I don't know. I can't explain why I don't even want to. <laughs> but anyway, I've got it held on with some Velcro, and I've got some Coyote Paracord here. This thing has got two snaps on it. It's got the, the dangler here in Condor tradition, the way they do it. And a lot of times, whenever I have two snaps, I will connect my lanyard to the first snap so that it's not dangling out everywhere, catching on everything. Okay. Now, this is not a four-reel deal go lock. This is just, it's similar to the shape of a go lock. That's what they call it. You know, Condor has a lot of fun with their names. Now, when I first got this, that's a good chopping machete. When I first got it, I hated the handle. Hated it, hated it. Because it was round and it would roll in my hand. So if you can look at it carefully, if I can turn it just right, I ground a flat on here and a flat on here and then covered it in uh, boiled linseed oil. And that thing, that's all it took. And it is so comfortable now with those flats on it. So comfortable. So anyway, that's that. That is another Condor that I am very fond of. I think it's funny. I, most, of, most of what I own now is Condor. <laughs> All right, let's put this over here. Now, my other one. Love this outfit. The Condor Warlock. 
this is a beast this is a chopping beast and i have made the improvements to this sheath that just make this the most comfortable sheath that i have now before this little thing here made it to where you had this much stabbing you in the stomach so i made this little dangler here out of cordura you can see it's got like a belt loop here and it's got a piece of wire on it well heavy heavy stainless and that is my dangler right there Isn't that neat and i went ahead and put a little pocket right in here for this pocket you can keep a a lighter or a ferro rod i've got a ferro rod in there but that is the single most greatest addition to a machete i think i've ever made because it makes it so comfortable all right this and it's got a black lander on it. it's got a my car to handle now on the back side i have made these are elastic okay these are elastic buckles because they don't droop down on your leg and they're not too tight i've got some clips on here i have two of them on here and this is just incredibly comfortable to have these two around your leg because they give as you walk fantastic now let's take a look at the machete itself it's got the two two clips right here normally like i say that first clip is where i will keep my lanyard to keep it from dangling around catching on everything so let's undo these two clips and pull it out take a peek at it right here that is a chopping beast that is a chopping beast okay it's i don't know if that's quarter inch thick or not it's not quite quarter inch thick it's i think it's more like 7 30 second actually because it's a little thicker than 3 16 my car to handle very very comfortable i like that blade kind of a heavy outfit so you wouldn't want to be carrying it you wouldn't want to be carrying it very far and i have it paired up with a wicked cool condor wood law it's got a scanty grind when i first saw that i thought man what a stupid looking handle because it's just a straight handle kind of flat on the side with some radiuses but man that is so comfortable i mean it's, it's amazing it's not contoured and i've never never sharpened that blade i've only polished it okay i use a Crytek stick on it i have kept it polished because i don't chop with this i carve with it so it stays relatively sharp and it's got a real nice black leather sheath that it stays in that i have attached with industrial velcro and i've never had a problem with it now when you oil these sheaths you have to kind of keep the oil away from the area where you have velcroed it on or you tend to make it fall off okay but i've never had no problem with that i love that that is a beast right there that warlock is pretty expensive machete uh the wood law itself i think the the wood law knife is 50 bucks and this this machete was around 80 maybe 90 i don't know that's an expensive outfit right there all right now a cheap outfit is the condor uh bushcraft parang they make a smaller one called an eco parang and i haven't bought one yet but uh, this one I bought because it was a little bit bigger. And it's a little bit different sheath. It's a solid cordura sheath. A lot of people don't like them. They think they're kind of cheap. It's got a small belt loop right here. It's got this thing right here. I had the lander attached to it. This thing just slides in and out. That's just a fantastic ch cheap chopping machete right there. Some people wrap their handle in tennis grip. Uh, that that uh, Adhesive tape but with a lanyard i've never had a problem with it slipping i like the shape of it it holds a good edge that's a good machete all right and what i have done to this thing let's put this in here now what i have done to this thing <clears throat> is i wanted to attach it comes with a pocket see the pocket right here that way you can keep a ferro rod or a lighter or whatever and what i have done is i have actually clipped a mora to the inside of that pocket right there i clipped it to it and then I sewed a piece of uh, webbing, and all I did is I just slid it up on it. And I thought I was going to Velcro the back or hot glue the back, but honestly, it's never fell off. It's just stayed on. So that's cool. I've got my, uh, this is a good cheap addition here. I've got my uh, Mora. I think that's a Companion HD carbon steel. I don't like the regular Companion because it's not as thick. I like the, the HD. I've got one of the other ones. This thing could look, let's see, where's it at? It's up here. Oh, 
this thing would look more tactical if it had if I had this one with a, a tactical looking sheath on it with a molly on it but I just I stick with this regular one right here man I got stuff falling everywhere back there but anyway I think that is yeah that's the last of the condors right there that's a chopping beast I highly recommend it I think this is around 50 bucks you might could find it for 40 bucks but that's a good good machete right there all in all I have one two three four five six one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have six Condor machetes, and I love them all. Probably won't buy any more because the ones that I've seen, I bought the ones that I like, okay? Everything Ontario K-Bar and Condor makes that I like, I have bought. There's nothing else for me to buy from those companies unless they come out with something new. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to the one-of-a-kind oddball type machete. On to the other ones where I have basically just one machete from each company. Okay, so this is this might be where I start making a bunch of enemies because I'm going to start bad mouthing some things. <laughs> I'll try to refrain though if I can. All right, now let's start out with this is a Columbia River Knife and Tool. Okay, now Columbia River Knife and Tool. Some of their machetes were too expensive for me in the past, and uh, I didn't love them. They were just okay, so I didn't buy any. Now that dude uh, Ken Onion, he's a knife designer. He came out with two designs for Columbia River. He came out with a uh, a half a chance machete and a chance in hell machete. Okay, I think this is the chance in hell machete. All right, the sheath. I've made some additions to the sheath. Okay, uh, this thing has got on the back. It's got some webbing back here that you can unsnap, and some Velcro here to where you can make this a dangler. And it was actually too long for me. So I attached it underneath here and made it to where, that's where my belt fits right there because it was riding too low on my leg. All right, now I've added some paracord to it and I added a mora to it. And then I have a ferro rod right here slid under, over, and un under. You can see the striker right there. And then I have added, I put in a, a cordura pouch I got rid of the plastic sheath for the Mora, and I found this some Cordura pouches at Smoky Mountain Knife Works down in the basement, and they fit Mora's perfectly. I got a couple of them. They're only three bucks a piece. They got plastic liners, so I carry a Mora with this. Now this jewel right here, you unclip it here, and then you unclip it back here, and then you unclip it here. But I believe you can pull it out by just doing those two. Now this thing, when I first saw this, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Yeah, it's a Chance in Hell by Ken Onion. When I first saw this machete, I thought, man, that is so thin. It's thin, but it's real tall. And I saw the handle on it, and I'm like, man, what a handle. That's got such a shape to it, you don't even need a uh, lanyard for it. So I bought this one, gave it a chance. I think it was like 45 or 50 bucks. And I have used it quite a bit, and it hasn't chipped, it hasn't rolled. It makes a ding, it makes a dinging sound when you use it, but it's actually a pretty good chopper. I mean, I, I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. I would have bought the other one too, the uh, half a chance machete, but I don't like the shape of it. I like the shape of this, and the shape of this is the main reason why I bought this machete. And for, I think for the price, that is a pretty decent, that is a pretty decent machete. And the sheath ain't that bad. Like I said, you clip it under there and you clip it under here. It's got two clips. Now, this, with these additions, with the paracord and the more added, this is a fantastic kit to carry on your leg. Fantastic. I really do like that. That is very cool. So, let's look on where we're going to go next. Okay, SC. This is the SC Hungalas. Okay. Just. Probably half of you own one of these. These are cool. The bottom half of it is Kydex. The top half is Cordura with Molly webbing. Okay. It's got a snap right here. There's a lock right here that you slide with your finger that actually tightens up on the Kydex sheath to get it out. Now, this thing right here, some people call it a big knife. Some people call it a machete. It's in the middle for me. You can chop with it or you can carve with it. It's a very comfortable knife with a lanyard, I mean with a micarta handle. I like that. It's a very expensive machete, but it has a lifetime guarantee. Okay. Now this sheath right here, 
some people are wondering what this fold looking velcro looking thing is on the back and what i was told is that was to go over the handle like that to keep from snagging on anything okay supposedly for jumping out of an airplane but i'm not going to be jumping out of an airplane anytime soon so i'm not worried about it but anyway this is a good machete it's very expensive very good there's better choppers out there because this just doesn't have the weight or the length or the thickness okay but it's still a fantastic one matter of fact i don't even i don't sharpen that one either i polish it with a crytex stick there's no reason to polish it okay so let's move on over to right here this is a tops machete now i've never really liked tops in the past not because of their quality because their quality is a-okay top notch their quality is incredible but 50 percent of their knives look like they came off an alien spaceship i don't know what it is i have no idea they designed some of the weirdest stuff but as soon as i saw this one i had to have it okay the sheath is awesome it's got all of the molly attachments on the back and this is the only sheath that I know of that has two pouches. And what's even more incredible about this is that with two pouches, this can be a complete kit. Say you could put a silky pocket boy in one pouch and put your multi-tool in the other one. So then you've got a knife, multi-tool, folding saw, and a machete. It's a complete kit. Okay. Now, this has just got a piece of Velcro on here. This is the Topps 170. They make a 230. It's about the same as this, and it's... Uh, it's a little bit longer. It's got a gray, some kind of a gray coating on the blade. It's a very tough coating. And it's got some weird looking finger chuls here and a chul here for choking up on it. Okay, so that you can do some carving. All right. It's got some kind of a weird dip in it. Joe Flowers and some other guy helped uh, design this. And that's why I think it's such a cool design. But this thing is very, very, very lightweight. But does a good job. Does a lot of chopping. And when I first saw the micarta handle, how it's flat on the sides with these chuls and these weird grooves i thought man what a stupid looking handle but then i looked up the reviews and everybody was crazy over it so i thought well i'll buy it and give it a try sure enough i gave it a try and i just i love this thing this is fantastic it was a hundred bucks i think it's well worth a hundred bucks i will never pay over a hundred dollars for a machete because right now tops just came out with these two other ones they come out with one that's kind of reminds me of a prying it's called l shady but it's two hundred dollars well tops you ain't getting my money <laughs> i ain't paying 200 bucks for a machete you can forget that there ain't no way i refuse to pay over 100 dollars for a machete i don't care who makes it because <laughs> there's cheaper versions out there that's probably just as good all right now moving right along i'm fixing to show you the one and only charade that i own okay and this is probably where people's going to attack me because i'm going to voice my opinion and i have refrained from voicing my opinion on things in the past but it doesn't matter anymore because I realize now people attack me no matter what. You know, it doesn't matter what I show. I can show a cook set. I can show a grill. I can show a shelter. And it doesn't matter. Everybody's got a better way. Well, not everybody. Because I, I, most of my comments are good comments. But there's a lot of people that it's just it doesn't matter what I do or show. It's wrong. Okay. Sometimes I'll have a discussion with people. And sometimes... You just delete the comment period i don't even want to argue with you because i explained myself in the video okay now enough on my high horse now let's talk about charade okay before i make everybody mad years ago charade was a good company okay very good company and then it got to the point to where every charade knife and machete that i saw to me it looked like a bunch of fifth graders binge watched rambo movies and then designed knives I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. If you love them, you know, buy them and enjoy them, okay? I can't stop you from that, but I'm not going to buy them. Now, the one and only chance I ever gave Charade a chance is because a lot of times when I make a purchase of a machete, I have used enough machetes that I look at them and I'm like, man, I love that handle, I love that blade, I love that design, okay? Well, this was the Charade. I don't even know what it is. They, they're like... The, the i don't even know the name it's fcmhk1 something they got they don't give them cool names like condor and tops does <laughs> but anyway this thing it came with a, a goofy shoulder sling looking thing where you wear it over it like my original design like that 
And uh, I like this, for this machete, I, like, I think I liked it better. So I can't remember what all I did, but I changed some things and I made it to where I can wear it only on my belt, okay? And then down here on the bottom, I sewed on a piece to where I had some padding. This is a padded piece with webbing and a Fastex buckle so it could go around my leg, okay? It's got a pouch in here that's got like a sharpener. Now, you undo this snap here and you undo this. Pull it out. Now, this is something that I'm going to say about this. The reason I bought this is because for, for once, Charade made a machete, a design, that I looked at, and I actually said, I've got to have it. I love this. This is the this is a pseudo kukri style, and if you'll look back, it's a direct ripoff of the, uh, the uh, Hero machete. It used to be made in Japan. The Hero... Machete, the Hero Cutlery Company, from what I hear, burnt to the ground in 2005 and they didn't rebuild. I think the dad had retired and the sons had taken it over and they just didn't want to make knives, didn't want to make knives anymore. So, I don't know, that may be a rumor, I'm not sure. But anyway, I saw this, saw the handle, saw the blade, saw the shape. I said, I love this, I have got to have it. I have absolutely got to have it. So, I'm, you know, because I used to hate Condor, I gave them a chance and now look at me. I love them. Okay, what else can I say? So, I bought this machete, I got it for in Christmas, okay, and then me and Nick, we went out in January, and I carried this first time use, used it one time, one time only to build a shelter, okay, and what happened, the edge chipped and rolled, okay, let me, let me ease up here and see if I can show you this edge, I may not can, but I'm going to try to, okay, see those chips? Out on the end. May not can pick it up good on camera. I'm trying to turn it around. I hope you can see them. Because I'm, I'm just... I don't go around bad mouthing knife companies. I like for companies to be successful. I like for them to sell a product. Now, I don't know. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know if you can see that or not. But... <clears throat> Like I said, this is that's uncalled for. I only paid 35 bucks for this, but it's uncalled for. For you to carry a machete out one time and build one shelter and the edge is all chipped and rolled, forget it. I'm, you're never getting a penny from me again. You've lost me as a customer. I mean, I wasn't a fan of y'all's before. You sold me this blade and one trip out and it chipped. So, I am not a fan of Charade. If you're a fan of Charade, like I said, don't let me stop you from buying from them. If you enjoy their blades, keep buying them. If you have luck with them, keep buying them. You know, if you, that's all that matters is if you enjoy them, okay? Now, that's all the bad mouth that I'm going to do. But I'm just going to say I am not a Charade customer. <laughs> Alright, now, moving right along. I've only got three machetes left. <laughs> Let's go to the one that's not really a machete. They sell this. This is SOG, okay? SOG is one of those bizarre companies that half of what they make is good and half of what they make is bad. It's like they got a high-quality line and a low-quality line, just like Cold Steel. Cold Steel's got some really high-quality stuff and then some really cheap stuff, okay? Now, this is the SOG Jungle Canopy, okay? It's a, like a giant knife. Some people call it a Bowie, but it ain't a Bowie because Bowies have a false edge on the top. All right, but this thing right here, it's sold as a mini machete. It's about, it's almost a quarter inch thick, but not quite. But that thing right there, the Jungle Primitive is thinner. It's about the same length. The Jungle Primitive is thinner and has a thinner handle. I had a Jungle Primitive, but it broke in half. And I got some mad. I, I, I left it out in the woods. But right here, Frost Cuddlery. <laughs> if you buy Frost quality that this is what you're going to get i kept this just so i can show people how much i hate frost cuddlery but the, the the jungle primitive i got some mad i threw it and i don't know where it went but i didn't keep it but anyway this thing ain't too bad i'm surprised it's stainless steel i'm shocked maybe i got lucky but the edge never chipped never rolled it's got a cool pouch i mean a cool sheath with a little pouch on it <clears throat> you can put in a multi-tool or whatever it's just very lightweight very nice i just I'm shocked, and that's a cheap blade. The SOG 
jungle canopy. Not bad at all. All right, moving right along, I got to show you this. This is one of my older machetes. I like this machete, but they quit making it. Uh, I modified the sheath that it came in. I put a dangler on it. This thing rides very low on my leg. I sewed up some webbing and made some stainless steel here for a dangler. On the back, I added some very, very small. These are tiny. They're like three-quarter wide Fastex buckles. Let's see right here. So I got two of them on there so that they fit, fit around my leg. This was back when I first started experimenting with it. I think this is when I first got away from paracord. It's kind of hard to undo them with my with one hand. And I have attached to this a saw, okay? This is back before I realized that silky saws and baco saws were the Mac Daddy. I just thought saws were saws. But this thing right here, this was back when SOG actually made a reasonably decent saw. See the teeth on it? You can saw a lot with that. And that thing right there, you can even do fine crafting with it. I don't know why the saw quit making this saw, and I want to show you the piece of junk they make now. <laughs> this is the piece of junk they make now. Looks like it's got alligator teeth on it. This ain't good for nothing but coarse cutting firewood. This, you can actually do crafting with it. Notches and maybe even hearthboards and stuff. But anyway, I have a SOG attached to it. And it got to the point to where when I started carrying this machete out, I started taking the SOG out and putting in a silky because it's a better saw. But I don't carry this machete much because they quit making this machete. It's got a place right here with some buttons on it. It's got a zipper. This is a stainless steel machete and it's called IC Cut. I don't know anything about it other than they quit making it. But it's a cool machete. I like it. I just, I quit carrying it because somebody said that these things are uh, kind of sought after because they quit making them. But there's, over the years, there's about a half a dozen rip-offs of this machete now that they are making. Okay, so, now, two more machetes left. The one that I showed recently in a video. We dig this out. <laughs> this is Timberline Tactical. Look at the size of this big giant sheath right here. It's got all these molly attachments on it. Now this thing right here, I forget the guy's name. Maybe it's on the blade. I forget the guy's name that designed this. It may be on the blade. Timberline Tactical Combat Series. Dave Young Design. Okay, it is on the blade. Now this Dave Young, I looked him up, and he's like a military, security, tactical, uh, even a martial arts kind of guy. So... I mean, he's kind of a, you know, he, he's, in a, he's a knowledgeable guy, you know. But I saw this blade, I saw the shape of it, and I thought it looks like a big old pirate sword. And I thought, I really, there's nothing there that I like. <laughs> but this thing, this beast right here, was $97 clearance marked down to 30 bucks, And I thought, 30 bucks, man, that's unbelievable. So I thought, eh, what's 30 bucks? So I bought it, and this thing's incredible. It's a big, heavy blade, but it's incredible. Up on the top here, it's got some uh, serrations on it. And then on the back back here, it's got the most, the most aggressive saw on a machete I've ever seen. Because it's got a, it's got a crisscross grind. Let me, let me pull you in right here real quick. Let's see if I can. Okay, you see the serrations on the back side? And then you see the saw teeth? Very aggressive, and it's got some more scallops right up here near the handle, along with a cord cutter. Cord cutter right here, and then of course it's got the blade. All right, let's cut this off. Close up. <clears throat> now, the idea behind this part right here is you can cut with the front. You can swing and cut vines and things. Well, this back side on the back cut, on the back stroke, you can also cut with it. And that, that, that little bit there, is a beast of a cutter. And this is ground the same way, but you can make some incredible feather sticks with that. But this thing, the handle's very uncomfortable. It's a very grippy handle, but it hurts your hand. You gotta wear gloves. And then it's got a glass breaker on the back, which is, you know, true to form for tactical style. But anyway, that thing that was marked down, a guy at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And they also make, this Dave Young guy also, uh, Invented a created a design for a tomahawk. 
which is pretty cool. They were marked down too. And this has got some kind of a cord lock with some kind of bungee material. And I don't know what that's for. Maybe it goes around the front right here. Maybe it goes around the front and then you cord lock it on. But this thing with all the molly attachments, you can attach it to the back of your uh, pouch. I just don't see... Let's ease you down here a minute. Let's take a peek at this. I do not see a person wearing this on their boat. Because I'm going to show you something here. See this belt right here? This is some kind of a modern type pistol belt, I suppose. Because it's it's adjustable. It's got these the Velcro right here. Well, let's take this thing right here and let's see if it'll fit. Let's just run this in here. Just like this. Alright. Now, let's just say, for example, that you wanted to try to wear this on your belt. Let's lift this up right here. <clears throat> Let me adjust this to where I can see what I'm doing. Now, let's say you wanted to wear this on your belt. Get this thing out of the water. <laughs> Look at this. Let's put this on. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Pull you down a little bit more. Just look at the size of this. I gotta move back. I just don't see you wearing this big old gigantic thing on your belt. I just, I don't see it happening. This is something that you attach to your pouch. I mean, yeah, to your pack. There is just no way. <laughs> Absolutely no way. But anyway. Not to make fun of it or anything, you know, this Dave Young guy has obviously designed a good machete. I mean, it's like I said, and it goes to prove that sometimes you can be wrong because I looked at the shape of it and I was like, God, I don't like that. But when it got marked down, I gave it a chance. I wasn't going to give it a chance at $97, but at $30 I did. And I'm like, man, that is, this is a chopping beast. It's heavy. But yeah, you just, you can't wear it on your belt. This, it's just too much machete and too much sheath. As a matter of fact, this isn't even sold as a machete. It's sold as a survival system. It's got some molly stuff on the front here and a lot of molly on the back. If you ever get a chance of getting one of these marked down, you know, not bad at all. Uh, I added, I added this stuff on the bottom here so that I could attach it to the bottom of my pack and it wouldn't be swinging around. But anyway, Timberline Tactical. Now I have to show my homemade machete. I can't, I can't, I can't do a, a blade video without showing my homemade machete. And here it is. I made the blade. I made the machete, the sheath. I made everything. Okay. This thing has got a webbing with a Fastex buckle for the belt loop. It's got webbing down here with a Fastex buckle to go around your leg. Okay. Cordura sheath, plastic liner. This pouch on the outside. This is a pouch that holds a breakdown grill for cooking food. It's got the grill that you put together with all the rods and things in it. Now, if you'll peel this off, the Velcroed on, the pouch is Velcroed on. On the back side, it has a diamond sharpener, a 3M diamond sharpener, okay? And then on the very back, it's got a zipper pouch right here that gets hung up where you can put a ferro rod in the back side. There's a pouch inside here. All right, now the way this thing works is you have to squeeze and pull out because of the way the liner is made. But anyway, this thing is 440 stainless steel, quarter inch thick. The handle is Delrin, I think. I think it's gray Delrin. And it's got a beast of a lanyard on the back. Okay. Just a big, huge, monstrous blade. I made that. I don't use it that often because it's very big and heavy. That is a real man's machete. <laughs> So anyway, I had to show that one. Now, let's run outside real quick and I'm going to show you a few lanyards. I've shown them in past videos, but for some of my new viewers, I really think you need to see them. Okay? These lanyards are a good thing to know. Okay? So let's ease outside and take a look at them. Alright, we're outside here. Now let's just go over some of the typical lanyards. <clears throat> if I remember right, there's five of them that I know of and there may be more. Okay? One of them is just a basic utility type deal it's it's like for a utility tool like a shovel or a saw or a knife or a machete or anything and that's just where you simply put it on your hand and you just use it 
in case it flies out of your hand it'll fly free a lot of people don't like that because they're like oh it'll fly out of your hand and it'll swing back and hit you in the leg yeah that's possible but like if you're on a cliff side of a cliff uh, edge of a cliff uh, if you're near water if you're near snow if you're up in a tree you know you don't want to lose it in the snow or the water or anything if you're hanging over the side of a canoe chopping whatever and you're fixing to lose your balance you're going to want to drop it and grab the tree okay uh, another thing is with it like that um, if you're like say cutting something out of a tree berries fruit whatever picking berries you can just let it dangle and you can pick berries and put them down in your pouch and then you know use it for clearing thorns and bushes or whatever that's one way of that okay now the other thing is my favorite way and it's what I use it all the time and I don't know if it's got a name <clears throat> I call it the lofty lanyard <laughs> because I I kind of found it myself, but then I saw John Lofty Wiseman doing it, so I thought it was a cool name to name it the Lofty Lanyard. But what you do is you take the blade and you put it on your thumb backwards like that right there, and then you roll your hand around. Okay, That's the one I use the most. I like it the most. I use it the most. Another thing, cool thing too is that you can kind of you can put your blade like this right here and you can kind of flip it up and hold it. Something else that you want to do <laughs> if you want to impress your friends go down here let's say it's in your sheath it's also handy it's not just for impressing your friends it's also handy let's say you've got it in your sheath like this right here you can reach back with your thumb okay and get your grab hold of your lanyard and you can pull it out that way okay people think that's cool <laughs> but like I say if your other hand is busy your other hand is is busy holding on to something you know just put it in there like that turn your thumb around backwards and then just pull it out and see then you've got your blade backwards and you flip it up and you grab it just like that all right so that's one of them i mean that's <clears throat> another one of them and then the next two there's the over and the under and they're exactly what they are okay you either you take this lanyard and you lay it over the top of your blade okay and then you push it down just like that and then you put your hands through the two like that and it locks into place okay I'll show that again that is the over simply take it and lay it over it and then you push it down just like that and then you're going to put your hands through here put your entire hand through both loops okay and it locks it into place all right that's the over the under is exactly what i said it was you go under the blade and then you reach up here and then you can either put your whole hand in it i don't like this one as much you can put your whole hand in it and it locks the blade in that position under your hand okay so you can grab it like that that can be a little bit tight but now as you can see once you've got your lanyards set to your hand width and your handle then it'll 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 be it'll be good okay now easy way of remembering over and under is if you put use the under okay swing your lanyard under the blade Okay, and you put your hand through here then the knife will be under your hand say I can even pull my thumb up and it ain't going nowhere okay and yet the further you push forward the better a grip now the last one is one that's rarely used it's called the three finger grip and that's where you take your last three fingers it's for smaller blades it's not for bigger blades you take your last three fingers or it's for blades with smaller handles and then you twist it onto those three for whatever you need and it may take a different lanyard and the way it is then is you'll take your first two your thumb and your first finger and you're going to kind of flip and that's that's like i said it don't work with this blade this blade's too big but if you've got like a knife and you want to use it as a chopping tool and it doesn't have the length then you're going to do that you're going to twist it up on them back three fingers and then the first two fingers are going to be the only ones holding on to it 
but you won't be able to sling it out of your hand because it'll be attached. But you just, you need a shorter lanyard for that. So anyway, but that's them. That's the lanyards, everybody needs to know them. Pick your favorite lanyard and use it. <laughs> All right, I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. Uh, I may or may not get to the comments because I'm fixing to work a big shutdown at the mill. And as a matter of fact, with this video is being uploaded, I'm probably in the middle of the shutdown. I'll get to comments when I can. And uh, next video is gonna be a very cool one, outdoorsy. I think it's gonna be the tree, pl tree platform. So I'm <clears throat> uh, looking forward to the comments on that one. <laughs> uh, hope you learned something hope you had fun uh, y'all take it easy get out in the woods fall's coming get out from behind the TV get off the couch get out camp enjoy the cool weather and I shall see you in the next one